The Nordic booth at Embedded World. Hello, so who are you? Hi, I'm Torbjorn. And uh, what we're showing today is a new Bluetooth 5 demo. So this is Bluetooth 5 with a little uh, display. What's yeah. going on? What are you showing? Well, basically what we allow you to do here is that you can configure. It's a simple GUI based on this display and the buttons on the kit. We actually allow you to configure various uh, parameters of the Bluetooth connection. We have a system that allows you to very easily check different configurations, whether you have a 4.1, 4.2 or Bluetooth 5 compliant stack. And on the Bluetooth 5 side, we have two different uh, presets for high speed or long range, just to simplify configuring the application. So this is on your new NRF 52840. It enables uh, the best uh, uh, Bluetooth 5. That's correct. So we actually have full support for uh, high speed, long range, and we also have hardware support for uh, advertising extensions, even though we don't have the software for that yet. And that's an uh, ARM Cortex M4, right? M4F, that's correct. M4F. Running at uh, 64 megahertz. And uh, what's the difference between those two? What is this one doing? This well, is broadcasting? This is the transmitter, this is the receiver, so it's basically a BLE connection being established between them. The reason we use two Nordic kits is that at the moment very few phones support all the new features of Bluetooth 5, so we're using two Nordic devices instead. And this board right here is actually a bit interesting because this is the power measurement kit. I guess we call it the power profile kit or PPK. So if you look on the screen, you can basically see the dynamic current consumption being measured when the Bluetooth link is running. So essentially we're showing off uh, two demos at the same time here. How is it possible to measure in real time what's going on in the chip? Is that well, what it's doing? Yeah, it's actually using an other 52 device to do the measurement using the ADC. And then we have a relatively clever system here where you have different resistors being switched in and out at different times to be able to accurately measure both really low currents like nano microamp range all the way up to 70 milliamps. So we have a very wide dynamic range. So Nordic is the leader in, uh, in, in Bluetooth 5. You're going to be the leader. For sure. Let's we're already on. the leader in Bluetooth Energy, so I think we're going to... You're the leader in BTLE. Yeah, about 40% of the designs. How does that work? How can you be the leader? Is well, it Nordic technology? Well, we're very focused on what we do, and we do everything. We make the hardware, we make the software, we make the Bluetooth stacks, we all do it in-house. It allows us to scale quickly for market needs. It allows us to release things very quickly. So immediately when Bluetooth 5 is out, we're able to release hardware and software to work with Bluetooth The first 5. one to show Bluetooth 5, one of the first, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of people out there that are Bluetooth 5 compliant, but being compliant doesn't mean that you implement all the features. So what we actually focus on is not only being compliant, but also having being able to take advantage of the new features in Bluetooth 5. Is it even lower energy than Bluetooth 4? Yeah, if you go into 2 megabit mode, for instance, you can do smaller packets, more efficient, then you get lower average power. If you use the long range mode, then the battery consumption is going to be higher, but uh, you gain longer range. So it's so sort of a trade off you have you to can, make. And you can go up and down? Yes, you can dynamically switch between long range, 1 megabit standard, or 2 megabit high speed. So, so you, this can all be handled automatically. Your phone and headphones and everything are going to go further? or lo last longer in a battery? Well, that's the caveat, because today no phones support 2 megabit or long range. So we have to wait for the phones to add support for these new features in Bluetooth 5. And of course, that's up to the phone guys. So if you're listening, please do this as quickly as possible. But here's a lot of uh, partners do you have. They're all using uh, Nordic because they think Nordic is best. Yeah, I assume that's why they're doing it. So this is all based on the 52832. It's the same it's chip. Lots of big and small companies. Yeah, so it's a lot of uh, module manufacturers, so all the Japanese guys and uh, yeah, a lot of these different people are... Uh, and they can the easily take your chip and put it into a PCB, right? To small exactly. boards. So uh, with this you see the metal shield, it means it's uh, usually FCC, Etsy pre-qualified. So it means that it eases the burden for you to qualify your design and you can more easily get to market quickly using one of these modules. And then it goes in all these kinds of beacons and stuff? Yeah, that's one uh, typical application for BLE. So we have a lot of people making beacons based on our technology. And let's check over here. You have a demo right here. Yeah, so what they're showing here is let, the Let's jump in. Let me jump in here. So uh, we're looking at a nice cool device here with a, um, is it a memory LCD? I don't know exactly the technology of the display, to be honest. But what we're essentially showing off here is a rechargeable wristband that can be used for wireless payments, for instance, secure payment. And then the way it works is that it combines with this wireless charging PTU. So if you look at this guy here, it's a 10 watt charger. It supports at least up to three devices at the same time. As we put it down, you can see the symbol going on, means it's being charged. As you can see, it's actually not 
there's no direct connection. There are a couple of centimeters of range between the charger and the device being charged. And we're essentially showing off many different devices being able to be charged at the same time. So this is a phone that's been equipped with the wireless charging circuit in the back. It's slightly wider than a standard Samsung Galaxy S3 because we put the wireless charging receiver into the device itself. And once again, it's up to the phone companies, of course, to implement this themselves. Are you a leader in wireless charging or not? Well, to be honest, this is very new technology. It's and new it's, for you, yeah? Yeah, it's not uh, that big in the market yet. At the moment, most wireless charging is based on Qi and inductive charging, so we're hoping that this will be bigger in the future. But this is not Qi? No, this is not Qi. This it's is uh, Nordic technology. magnetic resonance. It's a much uh, better technology that allows you to charge many devices at the same time. It allows you to charge in between a table. So you can buy a standard IKEA table that's really thick like this. You put the charger underneath, you don't have to change the table at all. And now we can just add devices on top of the table. It doesn't you... lose connection or power or anything? Well, actually, this is tuned for that kind of distance. So this charger right there is tuned for between two to four centimeters. So it means that you can uh, basically buy a charger that's optimized for the kind of place that you're putting it into. But it's not, uh, who's making this standard? Is it the Nordic standard? No, There's it's part of what's called the Air Fuel Alliance. Okay. So we basically have different partners working together on this. And Nordic's, uh, what Nordic is doing here is providing the Bluetooth connectivity because the charger and the device being charged will communicate over Bluetooth to sort of negotiate the, the power level that they need. So the number one provider of ultra low power wireless solutions. That was the That's demo us. you had at CES right here, right? Yeah. This is showing off the new uh, chip that you have, 52840, it's a big deal. Yeah, that's correct. So one of the key features of the new device is that we have this uh, 802.15.4 support, which means we can do thread. And we're working with the Open Thread Alliance, which include companies like uh, Microsoft and Google, Nest, and also Nordic. Uh, it's open, so everyone can contribute. Nordic is providing software. We're basically uh, contributing to the software itself. And what we're showing off here is sort of a typical use case for thread, which is the home automation. So we have this mock-up house, we have a door lock, we have a light here, we have a fan in the back. So you can trigger all these uh, exactly. things with the buttons. So it's all connected as a mesh right now. You can see the topology of the mesh in the background here. And then we can open the door, I guess. You can lock the door, open the door. You have a uh, air conditioning unit in the back on the side here, you can see this. Uh, I click to turn it on and off. Nice. We have a TV, you can see the TV here, showing the nice Nordic logo. Now we want to turn that on and off. So does the CEO of Nordic Semiconductor have big vision for the future of the company? You're going to be uh, even Very more, much, everyone? Uh, so, You're number yes. one, but there's going to be even more than number one? Well, the thing is the Bluetooth low energy market is just growing, right? So if we even if we keep the same position we have today, there will be more and more chips to sell in the future. And okay. we are focusing very heavily on this. This is our bread and butter, and we have to perform to be able Did to. Did you sell billions of chips or not yet? Uh, we're about 200 million a year, million. plus. So, so it's going to be a billion, right? Yeah, if you take everything together, we sold more than a billion chips. Yeah, we had that is anniversary a couple of years here? ago. Okay, no, the CEO is not there for this one, uh, unfortunately. Only, on, only uh, always on holiday? Well, he's doing uh, important work somewhere else, I'm sure. All right, politics maybe. <laughs> Could yeah. be, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs>